Hi there, I'm Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and in this video I'm going to try and do something a little bit different and cram multiple video ideas into one. Right, so first of all, Trent from Miscast is creating his own fantasy roleplay game called Arcane Ugly and asked his friends to make creature art for the first release. And yes, I really want to do that, but what creature? How about those gross eye bearers that I just made and painted in last week's video? Well, they're not plague bearers anymore, so I reckon they'll work really well for Arcane Ugly. So I know what I'm going to be painting and who I'm doing it for, but how should I do it? I kind of want to try something that I've never done before. As I mentioned in the last video, I recently got hold of Jazz's fancy art box bundle, and inside the incredible inky box, there's this cool dip pen and nib set. When I was a kid, and all the way up into my early teens, I used to draw pretty much every day, but believe it or not, I've never ever used a dip pen or a quill before. I've actually only used a fountain pen maybe three or four times, enough for me to know I didn't like using them. At least, using them to write. Maybe drawing will be different. Also, I'm about 20 years older than the last time I tried, so maybe I'll be better at it this time, or at least have a bit more patience for it. Now, just personally, I watch loads of arts and crafts videos on YouTube, and I know art videos, even if they're sped up, can get a bit boring. Not every single pen and brush stroke needs an explanation. So I'm also going to be answering some questions from members of the Midwinter Minis Patreon group as I go. Right then, let's take a look at this pen. It's quite fancy, a swirly, sparkly glass handle with a stamped metal nib holder. You also get a selection of nibs in the box, and after trying the different options I thought this one felt the most smooth on the paper I was using. A little dip, tap off the excess ink, and let's go. <laughs> so not a great start, the ink doesn't seem to run very smoothly. It's totally my fault in this case though, you just need to press harder than I'm used to. I've basically only ever used ballpoint pens or felt tips. When you press with a split nib pen like this, the two halves move apart very slightly and form a channel for the ink to run down. The ink contacting the paper pulls it out of the pen using capillary action. Once I got used to the pressure, and remembered that you have to top up the ink before the line starts looking too scratchy, I was good to go. Oh, also, obviously, you really need to be careful about smudging. The ink stays really wet on the paper for quite a long time. You can use another piece of paper to absorb it, but you still have to be a bit careful as if you move it too quickly, it'll still smudge. The night before I filmed this video, I did a quick sketch of one of the eye bearers just to get a rough idea of what I'd be doing on a bigger scale the next day. Doing one or two quick preliminary sketches before you commit to a bigger piece can really help you work with a bit more confidence. So starting out with a big sheet of watercolour paper taped down to my board, I used a technical pencil to sketch out the eye bearer, first starting with the rough shapes, then slowly bulking it out and making sure all the proportions look about right before I start adding areas of rough detail and refining shapes a little bit more. Ok, let's fire through some questions. What made you choose jumping into YouTube at the time you did? But to be honest, I was probably just really overworked in my day job, and at the same time the money that I was making from ad revenue and Patreon on Midwinter Minis was climbing pretty steadily, so I just decided really to take the leap of faith. I thought, this opportunity doesn't come along very often, and if you don't take it, you're an idiot. So I took it, and I'm very glad I did. Did you ever collect or paint non-Warhammer minis? Not really, although I do remember I did have some Max Factory vinyl Giver models when I was about 12 or 13. I painted those pretty well, I think, as far as I can remember. I wish I still had them. Who or what got you into miniature painting, and how did you learn to paint minis? I suppose it was really my school friends when I was young. A few people that I knew had Warhammer models, and I just tagged along, really. Remember, I'm talking about the mid-90s here, so no one really had the internet, there wasn't a web presence for Games Workshop. And for painting, the only thing I really had to go on was White Dwarf, and just my basic art knowledge that I had already, and was learning at school. How do you go about picking colours for a custom palette? Any tips for aspiring painters? I would say just take influence from things you think look good, whether that's other miniatures or paintings or pictures or stills from films or film posters. There's just so many cool looking things that you can just grab little colour swatches from and just create your own colour schemes, safe in the knowledge that someone or something thought they looked good as well. Back to the picture for a sec. I want the weapon to look a little bit more like a rough hewn slab of stone rather than the corroded metal of the regular Plague Bearer model. A quick but pretty effective way of getting the shape right is to fire some random dots all over the face of the blade, then connect close ones together to make it look like it has lots of uneven, sharp edged cut surfaces. Ok then, sketch done, time to crack out that dip pen and ink. 
Taking my time, I slowly started inking a more refined version of the sketch, able to do it with a little bit more confidence because I wasn't trying to figure out any shapes, just reinforcing what was already there, and adding a bit more fun detail. I know in this video it looks like I'm going pretty fast, but this whole thing is sped up to about 3 or 4 times the original speed, that way you can see about 80 minutes of work in just 20. How about a few more questions? Other than Games Workshop, are there any local hobby stores you like? 40k in Colchester is my go-to hobby store, they have so much stuff, I love them. Quite a few questions like this about either playing or painting Age of Sigmar models, and I would totally love to, I just have never done it before, I've never even played a game of fantasy, so maybe when things start getting back to normal I might find some people locally to try and teach me how to play it. What army do you see as your main faction? Orcs, of course. <laughs> I messed up a bit here. I forgot to avoid resting my hand on the wet ink and smudged on the arm. Not the worst mistake though, it sort of looks like spiky hair in a weird way, so I'll just leave it. Maybe I'll hide it later, or maybe I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, blotting paper down. Let's carry on with the inked lines. Questions please? Are you going to give fans the opportunity to challenge you to a 500 point game? Uh, I would really love that to be honest, it's just obviously at the moment it's a little bit difficult, but yeah, that's definitely something I would be quite interested in doing in the future. How do you deal with your colour blindness and how do you pick colours? Uh, truthfully, I don't really deal with my colour blindness, I, I don't really notice I have it. It's just maybe sometimes to other people the things I've painted maybe don't look quite right. But how do I pick colours? I pick them like anyone else really, I just choose what I think looks good, and again, sometimes that is good and sometimes it's maybe questionable. Having my girlfriend Penny on hand really does help though because she instantly tells me that something doesn't work so I don't have to waste my time on it. Any update on Henry Cavill? Well actually, now you've mentioned it. What is your least favourite Warhammer army? I know there's about a million people out there just willing me to say the word Tau, but I actually think they look quite cool. I'm going to go with Primaris Space Marines, they just really don't do it for me. Have you ever considered getting into 3D printing, like designing and printing your own miniatures? Honestly, that is something I'd love to get into, I think I might be okay at doing it, but 3D design is another hobby on top of this one, and also 3D printing is again another hobby on top of that, and they all require quite a bit of work and research to actually get into them and get good at them, and at the moment that's unfortunately just time I don't really have. But I'm not ruling it out in the future though. How much cold, hard, stinking cash are you making from the channel? Are you a billionaire yet? <laughs> uh, not quite. So the direct ad revenue I get for videos varies month to month. In 2020, the low end has been just over a thousand US dollars, and the high end has been pushing six thousand, which is pretty crazy. Usually averaging about two thousand a month. A lot of that has to be reinvested in the channel for equipment and various other boring things. The thing that truthfully enables me to do this as a full-time job is the generosity of our patrons, which I still can't believe there's over a thousand people who support us every month. It just blows my mind. So yeah, the little Patreon me help me sleep soundly at night knowing that it's actually viable to do this as a career which is a huge weight off my mind <laughs> important question here is a hot dog a sandwich yes alan yes it is if you had to stick to just one brand of paint which would it be pretty easy for me i think across the board vallejo seemed to be the most reliable and work best with my style of painting any tips for starting to make mini painting videos the main one i would say is just edit 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 do your best to make things shorter and punchier and more concise. If you watch something back and think maybe the pacing is a little bit boring, you can be 100% sure that people watching that aren't you will have probably switched off by then. Be absolutely brutal and slice out as much as you possibly can. And kind of on the same subject as the last one, what microphone and video editing software do I use? The microphone I'm using right now, and the one I've been using for about half a year on the channel so far, is the Sontronics Podcast Pro, which I would definitely recommend. And for editing, I use Magix Vegas, which has its quirks, but I would still recommend it. What are some of your greatest musical inspirations? It's really, really difficult to answer actually, because music is, or at least was, the main thing in my life. My top five bands of all time probably look something like Pink Floyd's, Pop Police Itself, Nine Inch Nails, Marilyn Manson, and Porcupine Tree. Bit of a weird mix, but yeah, that's that's what I'm going with. Ah, what are the top five artists and songs from Guy and Penny's Spotify Rap 2020? That is a very good follow-up. <laughs> Obviously, none of the top five are just mentioned. Top artists, Rammstein, Frank Sinatra, Tortoise, Beastie Boys, and Boards of Canada. Top songs, Dance or Die by Starcadian, Memory Arc by Rival Consoles, Auslander by Rammstein, and Monica and Benway, both by Tortoise. 62,000 minutes listened, Jesus. Hmm, let's see if I can make the smudge work on this side too. Yeah, not too bad. Let's keep it. 
I'll add some random boils and gross skin details while I'm here. Apart from the big smudge, I'm actually pretty happy with how this dip pen turned out for drawing. I still don't think I'd use one to write with, but drawing with it is pretty fun. Even though this particular pen is new and fancy, the technology is centuries old. Split nib metal pens have been used for almost 2,000 years. Isn't that crazy? Right, let's add some colour. Again, using just what you find in Jazz's box bundle, I pulled out three watercolour inks and two paintbrushes from the inky box and grabbed the hard palette from the minis box and used a pipette to transfer the ink. I intentionally squirted a bit of each ink onto the picture while cleaning out the pipette. This sort of random messiness is pretty fun, but it's also quite useful. It stops you from being too precious about the process, it forces you to be a bit more confident, and it can also add some cool unexpected colours that you can work around later, or at least add some weird visual interest. In an empty cup on the palette, I mixed all the colours together to create a neutral but rich mid-tone, diluted it with water, and painted the body of the eye bearer. I imagined the monster to be lit from the top right, so at this stage I just avoided the areas that would be hit by light from that direction. What would your teenage self think of you doing what you're doing right now? That's a bit of a difficult question to answer really, because I kind of, in the back of my mind, I still feel like teenage me, but yeah, I definitely wouldn't believe that a million people watch me paint toys every month, that's just crazy. Using just slightly dirty water, I tinted the eyeball so it wasn't just bare paper. I added a bit more yellow into the mid-tone mix on the palette to make a nice warm stony colour, and using this I painted the central section of the weapon. I then added a tiny bit of black calligraphy ink to the mid-tone and used that new colour to shade the shadowed bottom left side of the beast. The fun thing about watercolour inks is that if you're not entirely happy with the shape you've painted, you can just wet your brush and smooth it out before it dries and give it another go. Once the world is safer, what do you reckon to a midwinter minis con somewhere in the UK? I would definitely... 100% be up for that. Let's make it happen. Do you ever get painting fatigue, and if so, how do you deal with it? Really, it's kind of doing things like this. Doing something that is creative, but in a different way and sort of breaks you out of a routine. I also play a lot of computer games, probably too much. Recently, I've got really into RimWorld, and also just going for walks is a really, really great way to clear your mind. And it's especially easy if you have a dog that constantly wants to go for walks. Balnor asks a few very good questions here, but I'm going to focus on number three. What is your opinion of the ugly Christmas sweater thing? If you had control of Games Workshop for a day, what's the number one thing you would do? Now, I kind of talked about this in my Why is Warhammer so popular video, but I suggested starting a sprue recycling scheme where you bring in your sprues to the store, and in return they give you a pressed terrain tile made out of recycled sprues, and actually the YouTube channel Miniature Hobbyist has proved you can actually make pretty decent quality stuff out of recycled sprues. I'll link to one of his videos in the description of this, but yeah, I would totally do that. Recycle sprue trade in, get a terrain tile. To deepen the shadows even more, I added a bit of blue to my dark tone mix, and then was a bit more selective with the darker shadow placement. Using just black ink now, I carefully filled the open mouth, and to get the excess ink off my brush, I just flicked it all over the picture. Again, don't be too precious about things, inject a bit of randomness and work with it. Once I was done with the ink stage on the monster, I filled in the background with various colour washes just to give the beast some context. I was pretty fast and loose with this. My aim was to use warmer tones at the top and cooler tones at the bottom, but that sort of went out the window halfway through. I gave that a quick blast with the hairdryer, retake the picture to give the monster a bit of a square of framing, and then used diluted black ink to create a sort of soft vignetting effect by darkening the edges around the corners a bit. To make the pattern of colour in the iris a bit more natural, I simply wet the area using my brush and then dipped yellow and red ink into it, letting the colours swirl around and create transitions on their own. Then when that was dry, I went back to the dip pen and using red ink, I added some blood vessel detail to the eye and then some simple radiated texture on the iris. Still on the dip pen but using black ink this time, I added a slitted cat-like pupil and then filled it in with black ink on the brush. I thought the white of the eye looked a little bit boring, so I tinted it with a very diluted mix of red and blue, and even though it was diluted, it was maybe a bit too strong, and I'll sort this out in a minute. Some of the edges on the monster have been a little bit washed out with all of the painting stages, so I'm going back to just the black ink on the brush and adding a tiny bit more depth to most of the shadowy areas to make it pop out against the background a bit more. That's the shadowy areas taken care of, now let's pick out some highlights using white paint. Thinning it slightly so it's just translucent enough to see through a little bit, I added some white highlights onto the eyeball to give the illusion of a wet shine, and then also went around the body of the monster, adding a few touches of white here and there, 
smoothing out mistakes, and bringing back a little bit of vibrancy to the parts that were a bit bland. And that's me pretty much done with the picture. Let's take off the masking tape and slice off the edges. And there we go, a quick bit of original art for Arcane Ugly. If you want to own this actual picture, as well as the little preliminary sketch I made, the set is on eBay right now, with all proceeds going towards the homeless charity Shelter. The listing link is in the description. I've had a lot of fun trying out the stuff from Jazz's various boxes. I still really want to paint up the Apocalypse Ghost Diorama though. Maybe I'll give that a go in a video at some point in the future. If you like this and want to see something similar, I'll leave a link in the description to another video I made on painting concept art in the style of John Blanche. The man himself said it was crap. Thanks, John. But even bigger thanks to this channel's awesome patrons. Here's a quick roll call of the newest members. Poe, Zapple Snow, McFlono McFlooneyloo, Good Boy, Firesmacker, Christian Biscop, Bird Soul, Jimmy Jojo Jr., Josh H., Christian Reinhardt Hansen, Isabella O'Donoghue, Psychothor, Alex, Wiggly Boys in the Hood, Liam O'Neill, Table Ready Gaming, John Maisley, Jarrett Kaminsky, Raphael Moretti, Matthias Kraft, Gworl, Sam Newman, Mark Wiles, Chris Hyde, Dankman Schmidt, Matt Riggin, Jonathan Sinton, Brad Legare, Gary Duckman, Kick the Bucket, and Michael Hudick. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.